Satya, mind, body, spirit, health, and healing. Once upon a time, I had the pleasure of taking my beautiful five-year-old nephew to see the newest Spider-Man movie, just out in theaters on New Year's Eve. We entered the theater after a nice lunch at the co-op and a brisk walk at the park, him donning his newest Spider-Man costume, mask and all, and me cloaked in a big old winter jacket, pockets brimming with donuts and beverages for the show. We were quite the pair, and my nephew was kind enough to inform of many confused moviegoers that he was not, in fact, the real Spider-Man, revealing the lower half of his face just to alleviate any concern they may have still had lingering. Then this. I'll be honest, I was unprepared for the massive helping of questionable programming this particular Spider-Man movie was about to serve up. For starters, the beginning premise of the movie is actually Spider-Man debating whether or not he should attend college or be Spider-Man. If this is even being considered as something that requires a legitimate decision-making process, that right there is plenty enough to have an extreme TMS flare-up. But I'll give credit where it's due. It's a wonderful metaphor for the challenge we all face of being true to ourselves, whatever version of Spider-Man we may happen to be, or being what the world tells us we should be. The interesting thing was it was not obvious to me whether the writers of the film themselves were clear on which of these two options is superior, with the clear choice being, be Spider-Man, duh, the world needs you. But wait, it gets better. Spider-Man now even carries his smartphone along with him to get some exclusive footage and selfies while in mid-swing. But again, I understand the dilemma. Maybe even Spider-Man is exploring ways to make his passion a career. And sometimes our lives are just too beautiful not to want to share with others. Then the topper. You can imagine my dismay and amusement as I watch this bit of high quality drama play out. Stay tuned for after the clip for further discussion. It was my fault. I lost. I lost Gwen. My, um. She was my MJ. I couldn't save her. I'm never gonna be able to forgive myself for that. But I carried on, tried to, um. Try to keep going, try to keep being the, uh. A friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, because I know that's what she would have wanted. But... At some point, I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I got rageful. I got bitter. I just don't want you to end up like, like me. The night Ben died, I hunted down the man who I thought did it. I wanted him dead. I got what I wanted. It didn't make it better. It took me a long time to learn to get through that darkness. But I didn't. Because my aunt may taught me that everyone deserves a second chance. And that's why I'm here. You know, Max was like the sweetest guy ever before he fell into a pool of electric eels. That'll do it. All the things I wish I could have done differently. Now to have a second chance. <laughs> you okay? Oh, it's my back. It's kind of stiff from all the swinging, I guess. Oh, yeah, no, I got a middle back thing, too. Really? Yeah. 
You, you want me to crack it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. All right. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That was it. Wow. That's good. Right? That's better. Yeah. Wow. Ah, this is so cool. I always wanted brothers. We should do this again, like, all hang out. It's nice. Yeah. Um, we should maybe, you know, focus on... Uh, uh, not getting killed tonight. Yes, and that. Yeah, for sure, yeah. It's a good idea. I'll just grab your number at the end of the, the battle. You got it. So you, like, make your own web fluid in your body. I'd rather not talk about this. No, I don't mean but to... Are you teasing me? No, 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 no. He's not teasing you. It's just that... We can't do that. So naturally, we're curious as to how your web situation works. That's all. I, if it's personal, I don't want to like pry, but I just no, think it's cool. I I wish I could tell you, but it's like I don't do it. Like I don't, like I don't do breathing. Like breathing just happens. Whoa. It's just like when it releases, it's like a clean release. So can I ask something? Yeah. Is it like a when you think it, it webs? You know what that, I mean? That's a good way to put it. Because if I press, like I have to, yeah, I have a mechanism. To, right. But it, it's, it, for you, is it like web, and then it webs? Uh, not even conscious at this point. Like It's just like just, riding a bike. Yeah. Like, does it just come out of your wrists, or does it come out of anywhere else? Only only the wrists. You never had a web block? Because I run out of webs all the time. I have to make my own in a right. lab. That's, and it's a hassle. That sounds like got. a hassle, yeah. But I, I did, actually. You said that. I was like, oh, I had a web block. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Yeah existential crisis stuff yeah Woo! i mean like don't get me started on that I, i'm not sure what to say it's just a, a natural thing it just happens it's i don't know it's so cool man like i want to see the holes compared hey. like i fought a russian guy in a like a rhinoceros machine that's cool mm, not as cool no, it's not can, can we rewind it back to the i'm lame part because you are not no thanks no yeah i appreciate it i'm not saying i'm lame but I'm just, just saying the like, self-talk maybe we should you yeah, know listen because uh, you're you're amazing just to take it in for a minute yeah 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 i can take you, it in no, I can take you it in. are amazing i can take it in. you are amazing thank you yeah when you say it no i kind of needed to hear that thank you what we just bore witness to was actually a quite elegant and spot-on depiction of the archetypal fall from grace, the descent, or the departure in what we have come to know as the hero's journey. This brings us right up to what I would consider to be a spiritual awakening and answering the call to follow one's true path, the journey of the soul. The next leg of the journey is a story all its own. To the common onlooker just learning about TMS, the mind-body syndrome, this may seem like a fairly innocent bit of banter. To someone with a deep understanding of the pre-seven-year-old child's brain that is primarily locked in a theta brainwave state, stuff like this is anything but benign. For the child, this little scene is being taken in as absolute truth and will retain the potential to play out verbatim at any future point in this child's life. Let me share with you this bit from Dr. David Hawkins' book, Healing and Recovery, to clarify what I am getting at. We notice the primordial innocence of the child who is innately trusting. The child has faith in the integrity of adults, and it never dawns in the child's mind to doubt the truth of what is being told. The young child loves its parents and those extensions of parents called teachers, other family members, peers, playmates, television, and commercials. And of course, Spider-Man. A child looks at a commercial as though it were just as truthful as its parents because of the child's trustingness, openness, lovingness, and lack of paranoia. The innocent, trusting mind is easily programmed and therefore, out of its innocence, it begins to buy what it hears. The child identifies with those whom it loves as family. As the programs start coming in, the purity of the child becomes programmed because of its intrinsic innocence. Due to that innocence, it buys such statements as, all of us are allergic, heart disease runs in our family, we all have a weight problem in our family. 
When the child observes his beloved Spider-Man undergoing emotional upheaval, then immediately spins off into talking about his quote-unquote middle back issues, then goes on to have an amateur, on-the-spot, chiropractic adjustment magically fix everything, the child now has this whole scene deeply ingrained within them. Emotional trauma, followed by physical pain, followed by seeking relief in a physical manner, never realizing that the emotional trauma was in fact the root cause. Now we can all see how silly it is for Spider-Man to assume that swinging had caused his back pain. Now swinging with the phone is a possibility I'd be willing to consider, but this is really no different than the many misconceptions we regular humans have about our own back pain and many other bodily discomforts. Keep in mind, any belief that is existing in our subconscious mind will show up in our life experience, without fail. So ask yourself, what sort of beliefs did I inherit from my family, the television, commercials, and other such sources when I was a child? Mine personally are numbered and have had lifelong implications in the areas of physical health, addiction, and finances. All the men in our family have back pain, and Grandpa had back surgery at the age of 30 for further proof. If you are a member of this family, then you'd better just get used to having to pee a lot. And losing weight is an incredibly difficult thing to do, are just a few of the fun ones that I've got to play around with. I am also well aware that I've picked up many other weird beliefs about the eyes and numerous other body parts, which is not at all surprising given the amount of anti-health advertising we are all constantly subjected to. But the main takeaway here is this, once you are able to call a symptom for what it is, and manifestation of an untrue, unconscious belief essentially serving as a placeholder for shame, guilt, grief, apathy, anger, fear, or some other lower emotion, you begin the process of undoing this and healing it once and for all. There's also the fun story of me as a three or four year old, running to the refrigerator just before a trip to the lake, exclaiming, I got the beer! And of course, drum roll please, Money doesn't grow on trees, aka we must work extremely hard in this family so that we can still worry night and day about paying the bills. Now let me make it clear that I am not mad at my family. Sure, there is likely still some unconscious anger lingering, but I am also well aware that these patterns have been at play for God only knows how many generations. But nevertheless, they are the patterns that I will necessarily transcend. I want to conclude with this bit from Carolyn Elliott's book, Existential Kink, to remind us that blame has no place in healing. Also, if you are interested in true healing, this is the sort of book that I would recommend reading, one that is dealing with the true causes of that which ails us. I can't emphasize enough that this does not mean that you are to blame for difficult circumstances and relationships that your unconscious creates. You, as an individual, are not to blame or culpable for karmic or social conditioning created beyond your individual conscious choice. You are, however, as an individual, the only person capable of altering your unconscious conditioning and identity and restoring it to its divine reality. You are capable, you are not at fault or to blame. <laughs> Down here, on planet Earth, even Spider-Man falls from grace. Even Spider-Man gets knocked down, hits rock bottom, and undergoes a dark night of the soul. Down here, on planet Earth, even Spider-Man becomes vulnerable, stands up, surrenders, awakens, and ascends. Down here, on planet Earth, even Spider-Man can heal. Yeah, no, listen, uh, you're you're amazing. Just to take it in for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can you, take it. In. No, I can take you it. are amazing. I can take it. In. You are amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Will you say it? 
If you found this to be meaningful, please like, share, and subscribe to support and encourage future creations of this kind. And if you feel the guidance of someone who has been walking this path for some time would be helpful for you, I would love to work with you. I am now accepting bookings at howtosayfupolitely.com.